Thanks everyone for joining here. I have to excuse myself. I'm, my pathetic vein is not so uh, um, greatly developed like the previous uh, my STC. So we have to be more practical here. Um, so it's about analyzing DBM packages. I, I actually don't like this. <laughs> analyzing DBM packages with, with a graph database. Um, why, um, for me, it's um, now about 12 years that I became Debian developer, but it's the first Debian conference I'm participating. So I thought, um, because. <laughs> so yeah, that's for me, it's always a reason to get to know people because it's much better to see them in face and talk to them. Uh, I think everyone knows this. So I thought about doing a bit, this, a bit of self introduction here. Um, so by education, I'm a mathematician. Um, I'm doing this kind of stuff. Um, this is called mathematical logic, proof theory, intermediate logic, well, whatever. You will not hear about it because I probably guess you will run away. Um, I'm also a Debian developer. Yeah, you know, mainly about tech, uh, tech and font packages and a few other things that I use around. Um, what? The main part of my development stuff is, is centered around TechLife. So I'm the, the maintainer and developer of the whole TechLife infrastructure. Just to give you an idea, uh, Debian is quite happy because they own, we only have Linux as basis. We, we provide binaries and distribution methods, including installer updates for about 15 different architecture operating system combinations, including some strange BSDs, IX, Solaris, Windows, and that all should work, um, well, in the same way somehow. So that's a bit challenging, I have to say, especially the Windows part. Um, since my move to Japan nine years ago, I have now been now also very involved into the Japanese uh, tech development community. Uh, I will give a talk in two days, I think, about, a bit about this. And yeah, besides this, if I'm bored, I'm also a mountain guide. Um, so I like to carry, pull up and push up and, and, and get people into the mountains. Um, here in Taiwan, I'm, unfortunately, I don't have more time because there are so many nice mountains here to climb. Um, so I will, I will have to come back. Anyway, it's my third time, I think, right? OK. Uh, I, yeah, I forgot. My job, yes, I'm working at Axelia. I'm also grateful to my company to, who allowed me to come here. Um, it's not related to Debian what I do there. I'm research and development. The company is one of the, well, it's a small company, but the CDN and Internet uh, Services Security in Japan. Um, I do, well, security, machine learning, some kind of formal verification, which I carried over from my previous work. So this is what I do for a living, let's put it this way. A bit of an overview, um, what I want, hope to carry through today. A quick introduction to graph databases because, I mean, I'm not sure how many people have heard about this and what it is, but only very quickly because otherwise we cannot. Then, okay, packages in Debian, this will probably be boring for most of you, but I mean, just to be sure what we are talking about, a few things about packages in Debian. Then the ultimate Debian database, um, well, I will introduce it and discuss, and then I will look at to how to represent parts of this information, not all of it, parts of it in a graph database. And what would be the advantages of all this? Uh, I'll discuss the technical parts a bit, how to convert from, well, from the UDT, how to go get the information from the UDT into a format and then into a graph database, in this case Neo4G. And then finally, it will show some example queries and visualizations. Okay, so what are graph databases? Graph databases are just started like, I don't know, like 15 years ago or so, something. The idea was that tables, like relational databases, well, they are nice, they are efficient for some things, but not for everything. Many things in our daily life are, well, are based on, well, everything is based on some kind of relation, and it's often easier to represent. So what is a graph? We don't go into mathematical stuff, think about nodes, and edges, so nodes and relations <coughs> between them. Um, so the, these uh, graph databases, they try to fix, well, fix or improve a few things about above relational databases. The one is the duplication versus join. So if you, 
if you try to represent a certain amount of data in a, in a relational database, you have more or less two options. You completely normalize the database, which from the theoretical part side is very good because it's nice, there's no duplication of data, whatever, but you come into that hell of joins because for every lookup you have to join several tables and if the table's getting long, like I mean seven millions of entries, then lookups can be can slow down while well, we have indices, whatever. Technique in RDBs have evolved to go around this, but it's still a problem. And on the other hand, to make lookups fast, what you can do, you can denormalize, you copy all the data, that you have it all in one database, then it's fast and very easy and also programming-wise nice, but, well, you have the application of data which is generally not uh, very advisable. Another thing is the rigidness of the database schemata. The schemata, it's very, well, easy to set up a RDP, but if you want to change something in the representation, and anyone who has done this, it, it's a really a pain to convert to a new database scheme. It, it takes energy, server downtime, whatever, because you have to get everything out. And this is, in, in graph database, much easier. And, well, finally, also for the, for the lookup, this is related to this index and also to this uh, duplication of data and joints. This is like the locality of data. So when you have, well, stuff that is related to each other is also easily look, so it's easily to be looked up in the database, I mean by easy point operation or something, then things get very fast. And so if you look up in, the, in a RDP, if you think about this as a huge matrix, you have some blobs of data and the rest is, is a more or less a sparse matrix and, well, this is not really the optimal representation of sparse matrix, a huge matrix, because it's not very fast. So, uh, very simple example, think about uh, your favorite social network system and who is friends with whom or who follows whom or whatever and then ask for who follows or who is friends with someone who is friends with this guy. This is very easy <coughs> or very nasty with a RDP or if you, if you don't make it very nice then it's very bad because you have a double lookup through all the members in the database which can be a lot and that's not optimal while with a graph database it's just following edges very fastly, uh, very fast and that's, that's nice. So double join a long crease. So graph databases, the basic idea is that you represent graphs and have relations as first class objects. It's like, well, if you go to functional programming, you have function as first class object. If you go to graph database, you have relations as first class object. In, the, the RDBs have, are the relational in there, but actually the relation is not the first class object. It's just the table, the structure. It's not a first class object that describes. And this is different in a graph database. So there are various models database nowadays the most common is well you have a labeled property graph so you you can ad attach to each node and each relation a set of key value pairs and types and so that is very common it is okay now that was only here uh, it's the usual CRUD system so you can create read update and delete methods very standard and transactionality so you have everything you would expect from a normal database if you're in this. Okay, Neo4G, this is not the only one. It's the one I used for, used for th this project. Um, there are several other uh, databases. So I, I, nothing I present here is really fixed to Neo4G. So Neo4G was one of the first. It has native graph storage. What does it mean? You can, of course, take, so there are two parts to graph. The, the one is the storage and the other is the computing engine. Yeah? You query the database and I mean the storage can still be a RDB, but well, it is not very efficient. So the best thing is to have a native uh, graph database where things, where relations and nodes are saved and notion, nodes, nodes that are close to each other or re directly related are immediately uh, referential. So this is, yeah, not native graph storage. There are a few others. Uh, well, in all kinds of languages. And, well, I might see this index-free adjacency. That means that if you're re really in a direct relation, then you immediately can pick up your neighbor. You don't have to search anywhere. So that makes it very easy to pull up nodes and these questions like, who is the friend of a friend of this guy? That is just jumping over two relations, which is very fast. 
Uh, how to query this language? So there are many. There is currently a big activity to standardize on this graph query language. Um, one of these graph query languages which are used here is Cypher, which was developed together with Neo4g. It is the basic construct, well, it's just, well, you want to question, ask your, like SQL, you want to ask the database for some data. And that, well, the basic construct is something like this. You have a node, and well, two nodes and a relation. And well, what you see here, for example, is a typical example, where, but here node one and node two and rel, are just variables. They don't have any meaning. They just capture a specific node. There's nothing more about this. Um, you, a typical query would be match node one relation node two return. Uh, well, that's that's very bad. Uh, sorry, I have. So match. And well, I did save this. I yes, type one. So this would be. I give A and B here are the variables, and then I, I say this should be of a certain type, and uh, this should be a relation here. And then what, what should be returned is like return A, A, B. So what, what comes out here are two nodes, and they have a relation. That's, that's all. Well, easy to. This is a typo. So you can, the, the basic query, well, one of the basic queries is matching, searching for something. You match, you align your search somewhere, and then, well, from there you define relations and return a certain set of nodes, and then you get all this stuff back. We will see this later in several other instances with the TBM packages. So how do you create stuff? It's in the same way, like, for example, create. And then I see what the type of the node. I can attach arbitrary tags. I told you, for example, name hello, hello or uh, relation has no tag. So we can attach arbitrary tags to these um, uh, nodes and also to relations. And that, that creates, that actually creates two, type, uh, two nodes of type one and one relation. We can select all, all nodes of a certain type, or we can select all nodes that are in relation one in a certain relation. So you have a very expressive language to search about. You can pipe this into each other, so like, like iterated searches. It's a very powerful language. Um, I, I don't go into more details in this because, well, well that would fill a whole talk here. Um, so next, a bit about Debian. I mean, everyone knows here because it's the Debian conference. Just to remind, so you upload to unstable, then it goes to testing, and then, then to stable, and then there are some other suits like experimental and whatever. And all these packages, all this information in these packages are recorded in, in this UDT, we will see later. And packages have a lot of, um, well, we have source packages and binary packages, everyone knows. De developer upload source packages and, well, also binary packages. And binary architectures, uh, other binary architectures are built by auto builders. And, well, all is going to unstable. I think we know about this. Um, this is from the handbook, just a nice example. This for people not know. A bit about versions, because um, this is actually quite nasty if you come down to represent it. So we have different versions uh, in seed testing, stable, unstable, experimental, security, whatever, quite a lot of versions. The addition are all this intermediate that never made it into a release. For example, in asymptote, the package I maintain, there is the old, old stable is there 231 with the Debian extension and so on. And there are many other in-between versions. Uh, the full version string looks a bit, has an addition the epoch, which is now Please don't use it, whatever. But there are enough packages to still have it. And upstream version and Debian release. Uh, we have a bit more complicated example here. Music tech, 
which actually doesn't exist anymore, uh, which has an epoch, a version, a, a date string when it was uploaded, and the Debian release. So all this information is recorded somehow. Um, the components of a package I'm interested in now here, there are many more, but um, these are the ones I'm interested in this, this representing in a graph, is the maintainer, well, who is responsible for this, uploaders, section and priority, versioning, and dependency declarations. There are, there are a lot more, but uh, I will not discuss them. Um, some caveats that you just realize only when you rewrite this, this, this package database in, in the graph databases. There's, well, one source package can build many different binary. Well, we all know this. But the source package and the binary and package name can be very different and can also come from different binary package can come from different source packages in different versions. Yeah, like what I do with the Tech Life, we often incorporate other packages that were packaged separately before, and then you have some some temporary package for the upgrade. So source package and binary package are, are quite uh, different beasts here in this sense. And if we want to represent this in a database, we have to represent this faithfully in some way. You know, not just package, but well. Dependencies are also quite complicated. We need, we, we, the list is actually extending as far as I see always. I mean, for source packages, for the build stuff, for the binary package, we have this, and then we have various forms of dependencies. It's like package, just a normal package, then with the version, version packages and alternative packages and restricted to some architectures. All these can be also combined and mixed together in some cases, which makes it quite complicated. Okay, the UDD. Um, the Ultimate Database is a very nice database which collects, well, if you have seen, seen Brazil, it's like the Ministry of Information there. It's like everything from all sources is pulled into a huge Postgres database. I mean, it's packet source files, bugs from Debian, from Ubuntu, all the uploads, the complete history. It's impressive. Um, uh, popular contest, the whole history, Lintian checks, orphan package, whatever. So it's quite impressive. Um, the database scheme, if any one of you has checked it ever before, it, it is this. Well, okay, this is not very, um, let me zoom in. Um, yeah. Um, here are the tables. Oh, I can make it a bit bigger. So here we uh, for wanna build well, all the tables here and then a few a few connection between the between the tables but generally um, it's yeah information about maintainers and package names and dependencies is repeated all over many many times who is for example ubuntu package summary and ubuntu package the same information included several times ubuntu bugs um, security issues where is the normal package? Here, public packages. So here is the typical binary package with version and, well, thousands of inf stuff. And, well, here, summary. Again, we see here, for example, maintainer name, email. Is, is all, all, all of this is duplicated. As I zoom out for just for the fun of it. Yeah, I think that's the complete. Um, you never want to read through all of it. So if you look at this, it's highly denormalized. So I think... Every piece of data appears about like 50 times in different places in this database, which means also like, I don't know actually how this is managed, but updating one single field must be a real horrible thing. It's a typical example grown over time, I believe. I mean, I don't know, but it looks like, well, we just pull in this and then we pull in that and then pull in more of this and just stack everything on top. And Lots of duplication without connection, so there, it's, it was for me like, okay, um, if this we want to be actually used, then well, well, if you want to denormalize this, you get into a, a huge hell of joints because you have to get all this information, and so as it is now, you have a huge duplication of data. So both of this, these options were not really like interesting for me. So I thought that's. That is an interesting example of what one can do with graph databases. Comes back, why do I do this? Uh, it's like 
for me, for our company, we are, for some clients, we, we use, or we're planning to use graph databases. And so that was one sort of like finger training to see what is possible and how, how you can, what you can do with graph databases. Yeah, I, I forgot it's a pleasure for SQL features. <laughs> uh, if you look at some of the examples that pulls out data from the database, it's very impressive. Okay. Now, so as I said, I was interested in seeing what can be done. Can we put this into a, well, graph database that tries to represent the actual instances of objects in the sense of the source package maintainer into, a, into different entities of the graph and, well, build connections between them. And I will go through, so to say, the generation of the database schema uh, the graph database scheme. That means which type of nodes and which type of relations we have developed step by step so that one sees also how one develops a graph database, that how it comes up with a graph database so that one can use it in, in different occasions. So the first is, well, a source package builds a binary, right? I mean, yes, that's one of the most basic thing. Um, already I said source and Binary are quite different pieces because, well, we know they have, well, the w one binary can be built from different packages in different uh, levels of different versions. So this, what we first do is something like have an unversion source package that represents so the name in the database. So if you look up, for example, in packages dbn.org on the website, you can put in a name or a source package name. And, well, this is the, the most general that catch all of us. And we have also versioned, also versioned source packages and versioned binaries. These are then the, actually, if you go on packages, then you click in, DB, in unstable, you have the version 3.9.7, whatever. So what you come up, what I came up here, so this doesn't work, of course, is uh, SP, also what it now introduced are types of nodes and relations. So names for special nodes. Well, SP is a source package, and VSP is a version source package, and BP binary package and version binary package. And then you have relation between them somehow naturally. A version source package is an instance of a source package. Well, every source package, this is a general concept. We need this later for relations, but version source is an instance somehow. The version 3.9, dash one for of the source package. And the same with the version binary package is an instance of a binary package. Then we have the connection, a source package builds a binary package. And we have next, I, I introduced some next that we have so increasing relation. Uh, where actually it's a tree would be better to represent in some nice way, but at the moment I only pull in the information from, from the released version and it's no intermediate. So what you get then in this case, if you, if you throw in uh, all the nodes here, it's like, for example, I search to sync. We have on the right side, we have a, a Lua SEC. This is a, um, a build, uh, this is a, what is this? Is a, instead of, this is a binary package. Yeah, Lua SEC, this is a binary package. Then on the right side, the blue ones, these are the version binary. So I've, we have four versions. At that time when I created, there were four versions of LuaSec in version binaries. On the left side is the source part. So you see here already that the first two source, source packages were built from a source, also the, these version source packages were built from, also these, these two source pa version source pa oops, packages were built from a source package LuaSec, and later on we incorporated it into TechLife. Base, I guess I cannot read this now, take live base. So then the source package name changed here, version source package name, but the binary package we build remained the same. And these are just the build relations. And here we have some next relations to, to get the next relation. So these are so the basic steps were source package, version source package, binary package, and version binary package. Um, next we want to introduce is suit, like stable, old stable, stable, testing, unstable, what experimental. It's very easy, the suits contain a version binary package. Yeah? And that is just, well, contains, is not very surprisingly named after this. Well, if you put this in, then you get here some, some relations like SID, Buster, Stretch, Jesse, and Weezy contained, well, all these versions here. 
Um, I, I, of course, I don't show all the other relations because there are, there are quite a lot, uh, just if the few here we are using. Then for the next, like maintainers, what we do with maintainers? Well, maintainers, well, a node will be a maintainer. This will be, we will see later, like a name and an email address and maintains a virtual source package or a virtual binary package. If we do this here, we add in the graph before, for example, here before, before the incorporation of this package into Take Life, this package was maintained by the TBN Science team, and later on it moved into Tech Life Base, which was maintained by the TBN Tech Maintainer team here. And so, we, well, there's the maintenance for the version source and binary package for these uh, four packages. Um, well, up to now it was easy. Now comes the nasty part, and that's dependencies. Dependencies are very complicated to represent because as you have seen before, we have very complicated expressions in dependency. Um, the first is a normal dependency, it depends without the version, so I have to somehow point to a package without the version, and so this is something I can do. I can depend on simply a binary package. And there is also, in this relation, I can, we can put in a relation type, which means less, less, so strictly less, less or equal, exactly, greater or equal or strictly greater, so the normal relation, and the relation version. So this information has to be recorded, and here we use the, 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 the fact that we can add key value pairs to each node and relation. Here we add it to a relation. And so unversioned dependencies are recorded with a relation type of none, uh, just because something has to be in there. Um, yeah, if we do this here, we get a bit more complicated stuff. So here we have, have whoops, we have, for example, down there we have build dependencies from the LuaSec package onto all kind of packages. And LuaSec itself depends also on all kind of other packages. So yeah, actually I think I did, I think I showed all of them. But that makes the graph already quite full. Um, there's a problem how to deal with alternative dependencies, of course. I mean, how you do Here we introduce a new type, a new object, and here you see also why it's so nice with the graph database, because you can introduce a new object, a new type of nodes, without disturbing all the other relations. Nothing changes in the rest of the part. You introduce a new, new type of node and new relations, but you don't have to record anything in, a, in, in, the, in some tables anywhere. You just add these uh, relations and nodes. So what I said, we, I just add a node alternative dependencies that records the alternative dependencies as is and add something that is called is satisfied by. An alternative dependency can be satisfied by either this or the other package that depends on a real binary package that allows to represent it, and it's, it's necessary. Alternative dependencies are structurally something different than a normal dependency, because they, it can be satisfied by several packages. Okay, so what up of the summary, summary of nodes and relations? Um, so on the nodes, we have maintainer. For the maintainer, we record just the name and the email. This is different to the, to the UDT or something. In the UDT, there is a complete the email is correct, but the names often changes. So there are many different names for the same mail, email address in the, in the UDD. So it seems that uploaders sometimes change the name or the, the name of, especially of groups. Then for a binary package, source package, suit, and alternative dependencies, there is nothing more than just the name. Well, we want to, how, how is this package called, right? And for versioned, binary package and version source package, we just add a name and a version. Well, since it's version, we want to nurse. For the relations and their attributes, well, for all these relations, there are a lot of them. They have just two, as explained before, they have the relation type, whether it's uh, unversioned or strictly less, whatever, this version, and the, re the respective version. And for build, contains, is instant of, maintains, and next, there are no attributes. It's just between the two entities, this is the relation is already contains the full in information. A builds B, tells you already everything you want to need. Okay, uh, su summary of when I pulled this down the last time, uh, we have 28 suits, which is quite a lot. 
It is not only stable, unstable, all the security and whatever. We have maintainers 3510 at this time, so unique uh, maintainer email addresses. We have alternative dependencies appear in about 8,000, 9,000 cases. Source packages at that time were, well, 32 or something thousand. Well, binary package, I don't, well, anyway. So you see quite a lot. In total, nodes in total of this graph and developed is about half a million. And relations, well, I, I don't count it, there are too many. In total, it's like 4.5 million relation entries in the graph database. And this is only the data, the information I've ex also extracted by now. It does not contain any information of bugs. The whole bug database is something I want to do later on. Okay. How to get this whole stuff from uh, the UDD into Neo4g or into a graph database? Well, there is a public mirror for UDD. It's a PostgreSQL, PostSQL server. Everyone can access it. The information on the, on the website gives you the username and password. Um, I use the Perl script to access this. This is completely standard. Of course, I pulled once only the whole data into a CSV file or whatever and then I worked on this. Um, my first try, this is now for, for a bit people with, with graph data, my first try to generate a lot of cipher statements because that was quite easy and just feed the cipher statements into the graph database. Um, that was not really a good idea. I just say that um, I think after a few hours, I stopped and I think we were like a one per mil through the data of lines. Um, the problem is with the cipher statement, you have to lock the whole database. Uh, make the transaction and then do it out. So that's completely impossible to actually carry out. So there's a Neo4g import tool that where you create for each node and node type and each relation type a CSV file and then you uh, uh, feed this in. Uh, yes, 10 seconds for this 5 million uh, data points I mentioned before. So that was quite easy. Uh, I recommend to not even think about using Cypher for for any, for any import of huge data, so uh, that's good. Um, how do I do this? Just for those, the Perl program that pulls the data from the, from the UDD is a Perl program that saves the whole stuff in CSV, generates a huge hash, reorders all the stuff, deals with inconsistencies in the whole database, like different maintainer names with the same email, uh, UDAP packages are not treated with, with all this kind of stuff, then generates for each item a, a unique UIID um, that's necessary for the CSV and for the linking, and then generate the necessary CSV files. Um, it's a bit convol convoluted Perl script, but it's, well, not so bad. Some sample queries, since we are running out of time. Okay, this is a complex query. You have seen only a bit of, of Cypher, but I want to see. But it's actually readable. So what you say, if you remember what BP and all this is, well, what we search for, find all packages in Jesse that build depends on some version of Tech Common. Well, all at the end is s.name is Jesse. So suit is, when, if you start on the right back, right on the back here, there's the suit, Jesse. And Jesse should contain a binary package, right? The binary package is captured in this VPP, in this variable, variable and well, then we need a source package that builds this binary package. And you see, con when you query this stuff, you can have relations in all directions you want. And then, and this source package build depends on the binary package, and the binary package name is tech common. What you get is what you see down there. So there's on the, on the left is, I see this here. So here, wait, whoop. Oh, no, that was the wrong one, that is the right one. So here you have tech common, and here you have Jesse, and well, there are all the packages in between. So the, what I'm using here is the Neo4g browser. You can use uh, a normal web browser also for this kind of stuff. So to give you an idea. So 
okay, yeah, that looks a bit like, yeah, yeah, so it's JavaScript doing all this kind of stuff. After this, you can reorder this, and then the location is fixed, and after some time, the wiggle, wiggle, wiggle stops until you kick it again. So, well, if you click on one of these nodes, you see below, below the name or the package and the version or the relation between this kind of stuff is there are build depends. There is, for example, a relation type and a relation on the lower part here. So all this information is uh, um, uh, re recorded in the database. Another question is like the number of packages in SID that build depends on X, whatever, package, and order by the number of depending packages. Well, what's, it's a bit more complicated, query, but actually not. It's just suit is again SID, and we want a dependent, build dependency on something, and then you see also that you can add something like, well, like in SQL, some uh, aggregation function, like counting on this kind of stuff or something, and then return and order by. So it's for, if you know SQL, it's, it's besides this match statement, it's very similar. So what you get is step helper is not surprisingly the, the biggest use, uh, used, and uh, DH Python is the second one, which was quite surprising. Um, I have, I oh know, I think that's, that's the second, um, well, I have many more, but I want to show some conclusions. Um, so finding a good representation in the graph is not easy. It's not straightforward. Actually, it's converting a traditional RDB and a system of RDB into a graph database is actually somehow a pain because you have all this old material. It's a very nice technique if you start from fresh. If you want to represent some customer data, or whatever, then graph it, that has some resemblance to graph, then graph database is uh, probably better way than, than uh, RDP nowadays. Well, don't use Cypher for importing any reasonable amount of data. Uh, well, I said grown or old grown RDP is always a pet. And it's also a bit, visualization is a bit of a problem. It depends on which version of Chrome and Firefox and sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's slow. I, I, I think there's, it has to be with the blood moon or something. Um, anyway, visualization works. They have they shipped out recently a new tool, Neo4G. It's called Bloom. It's only for ca paying customers, unfortunately. Uh, that should help in visualization. But actually, there are some other libraries based on just the interface is open, the specification is open. It's all going into the open uh, graph, uh, graph specification language, I, I don't know what's the official name, so this will be all standardized, is in the process of being standardized, so there will be for sure better tools in the, in the near future. There are some things I want to do, uh, allowing time. Um, the biggest one is the bug database, that would probably make the database, the graph, quite huge, but it's on the other hand quite nice, because things like, well, in which package version, a bug did appear, and when it was fixed, and all this information is quite easy to represent in this graph. It would be also possible to get all the information of intermediate uploads from the UDT. There is a table somewhere hidden. This is, is the, the upload table. So all this information is somehow there, but it needs somehow parsing. The dependency management could be rewritten. I, I'm not sure if this is the optimal representation of it. Um, what would be nice to represent some then, I mean, if you have done all this, but there's, well, it's not a one-man show. It's just represent some of the UDD dashboard or some of the services within Debian by interfacing to the graph database instead of this UDD, just in the hope that it, well, speeds, makes code more interesting or more graph theoretic. Uh, other things I'm interested in, more graph theoretic, it's like cycle, dependency cycle, connected components, things that group how, how strong are connections between certain packages. So that's more on the graph theoretic side. Okay, the sources and everything is on GitHub. There are also some slides, and thanks for mentioning, I should do this, yes. I will put also, I put some reports on my blog on this. I will link it here and put it also in, in, in GitHub or at least some part. So 
a, a markdown version of it into GitHub that the blogs are readily available. Okay, thanks for the attention and well, if there are questions, I'm open to everyone. Coffee break. <laughs> <laughs>